Welcome back to the Volunteer Training Program, the Need to Know series. Experts in the field of quality and safety strongly encourage volunteers to be trained in the following areas. Hand hygiene, infection control and prevention, risk and safety, work hazardous materials information system, food safety and choking prevention, emergency measures, and fall prevention. As a trained volunteer, you are better prepared to provide volunteer services that are of high quality and provided in a safe manner. We are here to help you in your new role as a volunteer. This is where our quality and safety training sessions fit in. We have developed a series of a few short self-teaching and self-learning quality and safety modules to assist you to feel more comfortable in your role as safety conscious volunteers. The series is entitled the Need to Know series. Each module lasts approximately 10 minutes each and is a self-contained and independent unit of instruction so you can learn at your own pace and at a time that is convenient for you. So now, sit back, get comfortable, and let's learn together. Simply press the enter button on your keypad to move forward from slide to slide. Welcome to the hand washing training module. At the end of this important safety module, you will be able to explain how our hands spread illness, list the important moments when hands must be washed, compare the differences between washing hands with soap and water and cleaning them with a hand sanitizer, demonstrate the proper hand hygiene technique, identify areas often missed during hand hygiene, and recall the three key terms of the presentation. Here are four ways that our hands can spread illness. If germs are present on our hands, and this can happen even if our hands look clean. If germs on our hands are able to live for a few minutes. If our hand washing technique is inadequate, completely forgotten, or the product used for hand hygiene is inappropriate. Our contaminated hands come into direct contact with a client or resident or with an object that will come into direct contact with the client or resident. Now let's look at a real example of how this could happen where you volunteer. You are a volunteer that regularly helps out with the bingo. On your way to volunteer, your nose itches and you sneeze while you are driving. You blow your nose at the light and arrive just as the bingo is about to start. You rush in, forgetting to use the hand sanitizing gel located at the entrance. You sit down at your usual table and start assisting Mrs. Jones with her bingo card. Mrs. Jones also likes to touch the card and move the sliding windows. Can you think of how Mrs. Jones could possibly pick up your germs? That is right, from the bingo card. Not all germs that we have on our hands make us sick, but many can. Therefore, hand washing and proper hand hygiene are the best methods that we have of preventing illness, not only for ourselves, but also for our clients and residents. Do you know the four important moments when your hands must be washed, even though they do not look dirty? Well, according to the World Health Organization, four moments of hand hygiene during volunteering have been identified and are crucial to preventing the spread of infections by our hands. The first is as you enter the center where you are volunteering. The second is before touching or helping a client or resident. The third is after touching or helping a client or resident. 
and lastly, as you leave the center where you are volunteering. The time you take to wash your hands is also very important. Hand hygiene using an alcohol-based hand rub should take between 20 and 30 seconds. And hand hygiene using soap and water should take 30 seconds. In fact, this corresponds to singing the happy birthday song twice. Both hand hygiene methods are excellent methods. The following slide contains a three minute video clip on the importance of hand washing and a demonstration on the proper way we should be washing our hands. Let's see if the way we usually wash our hands measures up to the best practice method of the Center for Disease Control. Please note that to view this video, you need to be connected to the internet. All set. Simply double click on the picture to start the video. Hand washing is one of the most important ways you can keep from getting sick and spreading germs to others. Dirty hands spread disease. This hand washing demonstration will show you how hand washing can get rid of germs and chemicals that get on our hands every day. This gel is like the germs and chemicals that we get from things we touch throughout the day, like our toys and pets. If we then rub our eyes, nose, or mouth, or pick up something to eat, the germs or chemicals can get into our bodies and make us sick. Studies have shown that people touch their eyes, nose, and mouth about 25 times every hour without even realizing it. To get rid of these germs and chemicals, CDC recommends you follow these easy steps every time you wash your hands. Wet, lather, scrub, rinse, and dry. We're going to show you the right way to do each step. First, wet your hands with clean running water. Turn off the tap and apply soap. Then, lather your hands by rubbing them together with the soap. Be sure to lather the backs of your hands between your fingers and under your nails. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. If you don't have a clock nearby, keep scrubbing until you've sung the happy birthday song twice. Rinse your hands well under clean running water. Dry your hands using a clean towel, electric hand dryer, or air dry them. Washing your hands using the steps we just demonstrated is very important to get hands completely clean. Let's see how well we got rid of the germs and chemicals. Great, no more germs and chemicals. Why is this so important? Germs and chemicals from unwashed hands can get into our foods and drinks when they're being prepared or when we're eating or drinking them, which can make us sick. Also, germs and chemicals from unwashed hands can be transferred to other objects like cell phones, tabletops, or toys, and then transferred to other people's hands. That's why it's so important to wash your hands following these steps. Wet, lather, scrub, rinse, and dry so you can stay healthy and help keep those around you healthy. For more information, visit cdc.gov forward slash hand washing. In the video clip, you notice the areas on our hands that we often miss when we wash them. Here's a picture that shows us even more clearly the areas that we need to pay more attention to. Next time you wash your hands, whether it be with soap and water or with a hand sanitizer, remember to include the forgotten areas that you see here in red, your fingertips, your nails, and your thumbs. If soap and clean water are not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer to clean your hands. These sanitizers significantly reduce the number of germs on your skin and are fast-acting. 
However, you must remember to rub until your hands are completely dry. Here's a little homework for you. The next time you volunteer, try to find as many hand sanitizer stations as possible. Starting with the ones located right at the front door, near the elevators, and wherever clients and residents have activities. Can you guess three things on our hands that are magnets for germs? Germs just love them because they make hand washing more difficult. Let's find out on the next slide. We all can appreciate beautiful hands and well-groomed nails, but unfortunately, long fingernails, artificial nails, and heavy jewelry on our hands are all unacceptable in any healthcare setting. Artificial nails and nail polish act as magnets for germs, and it is more challenging to remove them when we wash our hands. Germs also love to cling and hide in and under our jewelry, again, making hand washing more difficult and less effective. Long nails make the removal of germs very difficult as the germs love to hide under the nail. Also, they are a risk for scratching a client or a resident. Let's aim for a professional look. Short, clean, natural nails free of colored nail polish, and as little jewelry as possible. It is time now to recall the three key elements of the hand hygiene presentation. The first key element is that it is very important that you wash your hands frequently while you are volunteering, but mostly, you must respect the four moments of hand washing. These are as you enter the center where you are volunteering, before touching or helping a client or resident, after touching or helping a client or resident, and as you leave the center where you are volunteering. The second key element is how our hands spread germs. If we recall, Germs are present on our hands, even when our hands look clean. Germs can be able to live for a few minutes on our hands. Our hand washing technique could be inadequate. We could have completely forgotten to wash our hands, or the product used for our hand hygiene might be inappropriate. And lastly, our contaminated hands might come into direct contact with our client or resident or with an object that would come into direct contact with the client or the resident. And last but not least, the best way to be sure our hands are clean is to respect these hand washing steps. Wet your hands with warm water, mix the soap to get a good lather, Remember to scrub all the areas on your hands, paying particular attention to your fingertips, nails, and thumbs. Rinse well and then pat dry. As a volunteer, it is very important that you understand your role with regards to hand hygiene. Understand that your hands can make people sick. They can transmit illness. Your role as a volunteer helping vulnerable clients and residents is to ensure that you wash your hands regularly using the proper method that you have learned here today and using the proper products. Hand washing is your best defense to prevent sickness. Congratulations, you have completed a very important learning module. Please let your volunteer coordinator know so they can keep track of your trainings in your profile. So, until next time, thank you very much for volunteering with Safe Teeth.